universe reveals its secrets one by one, and then it throws even more mysteries on top, probably to keep us busy. Think about the universe from ancient times till now. The best human minds have been struggling to solve its mysteries. In ancient times, the Earth was considered as flat as a plate, resting either on three turtles or elephants, and the sky was seen as a bowl covering it. In ancient Greece, people already knew the Earth was round. However, the Sun was thought to orbit our planet, not the other way around. Just think of how much the science progressed since those times. We know that we orbit the Sun. Along with us, the Sun orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way, with about 50 neighboring galaxies, revolve around an invisible gravity center in the local group of galaxies inside the Virgo supercluster. Like other superclusters, it turned out to be a part of the larger structure of the Lanaya Kea supercluster, and its objects don't orbit around one point, but simply tend to collapse into a super heavy anomaly in the center called the Great Attractor. We can't see it because of the specific position of our galaxy. The disk of our galaxy blocks our view. But today, we aren't interested in the attractor, but in the frightening, empty area opposite it. Dipole repeller. Such empty areas in space are called voids. If you look at the universe from the side, it would appear as countless networks of galactic threads separated by empty spaces called voids. This is what our world looks like if we represent it in one picture. Here, you can see 10 billion light years of space connected by galactic filaments. Here is your home. In terms of visual representation, the humanity has already literally reached the edge of the universe, marked by quasars. However, two dark spots have appeared in this phenomenal picture, showing the triumph of the human mind, and they spoiled everything. Two dark mysteries of the universe. How are these threads of substance connected? The movement of planets, stars, and galaxies at great distances perfectly describes Newton's law of universal gravitation. Based on this movement, computer simulation showing the life of galaxies was created. It showed that weighing as much as they do, galaxies would no longer exist as a whole. Their stars would just scatter, but the fact that it hasn't happened means that something is holding them back. Next, astronomers measured the speed at which the stars lying at different distances from our galaxy's center orbit it. It's easy to calculate this, knowing the mass and distance from the stars to the galaxy's center. But the researchers found the results quite surprising. The stars lying in the center of the galaxy and on its outskirts moved at the same speed, and they shouldn't. This means that either the physics of Newton and Einstein doesn't work, or the galaxy's outskirts are filled with some invisible substance. The scientists were quite puzzled and just exclaimed, Amazing! Their train of thought was rather simple. Only gravity can hold stars together. Gravity can only be created by mass. This means that in galaxies, there is some other additional mass holding the stars. And since this mass is not visible by telescopes, it simply cannot be seen. A brilliant thought. This invisible mass is called dark matter. With this in mind, Scientists quickly created the standard cosmological model called Lambda Cold Dark Matter, abbreviated as Lambda CDM. In other words, the standard cosmological model is a set of rules and equations that describes our universe and explains everything observed in it. In the modern standard cosmological model, the universe is filled with dark energy and cold dark matter 
in addition to ordinary baryonic matter. According to this model, the age of the universe should be considered 13.799 plus or minus 0.021 billion years to be consistent with observations. Note that the term dark matter was adopted not because of this matter's invisibility. It would then be called invisible. Dark literally means dark, that is, incomprehensible. Nothing is known about this hypothetical substance. Well, except that it does not emit, reflect, or absorb light and other types of electromagnetic radiation. X-rays, radio waves, ultraviolet light pass through dark matter and don't interact with it in any way. Later on, scientists calculated that there is a lot of dark matter and energy in outer space. According to Lambda CDM, our universe has only 5% of regular, so-called baryonic matter that forms all observable objects, 25% of dark matter registered due to gravity, and dark energy, which makes up as much as 70% of the total volume. It's believed that all dark matter appeared shortly after the Big Bang and spread in filaments throughout space. It was as if the World Wide Web had emerged, which pulled in the particles of the latter formed visible substance due to the gravitational force. Once in the web, regular particles could no longer escape. Stars and planets formed from their clusters. And between the cells of this cosmic web, there emerged great empty spaces called voids. That is, vast chunks of space with no or almost no galaxies and clusters. Voids typically span across 10 to 100 megaparsecs or more, most commonly 30 to 350 million light years. For example, the Boötes void in the Boötes constellation spans across 330 million light years. By the way, we've made a video about it. Be sure to watch it. The threads in the cosmic web are distributed unevenly. Somewhere, there are almost none of them, but somewhere, they are huddled together. For example, Dark matter is virtually absent in the strange Dragonfly 44 galaxy from the Cetus constellation. But the other galaxy, from the Coma Berenices cluster, is 99.9% .9 dark matter. Scientists are yet to discover what dark secrets are hidden in this invisible wonderland. But they found that our Milky Way is merely a bug compared to a ghost galaxy it contains twice as much dark matter as ordinary matter. Most recently, scientists managed to draw up a detailed map of how dark matter is distributed over a large area of the southern sky. The map was created by astronomers at the Inter-American Observatory in Chile after analyzing images of 226 million galaxies. Just look at it. Isn't it breathtaking? A real space show where dark matter is highlighted in bright purple. But what is the nature of this invisible matter highlighted as purple on the map? Of course, the first thing that comes to mind is its connection with antimatter. Let me explain right away. They have nothing in common. When reacting with regular baryonic matter, antimatter annihilates. It turns mainly into light, that is, the pure form of energy. Visually, it looks like an explosion. And since Einstein proved that energy is matter multiplied by the speed of light squared, and the speed of light is no less than 3 times 108 meters per second, then a lot of energy will be released. For example, the energy of 1 milligram of antimatter is enough to fly to Mars. And that's only 1 milligram. This is one thousandth of a gram of a substance. But where did this dark matter come from? At first, scientists suggested that the nature of invisible matter is connected to a massive astrophysical compact halo object called Macho. 
Since machos are not bright objects, they are difficult to detect. They come in many varieties. These are black holes, neutron stars, brown dwarfs, or orphan planets, sometimes white dwarfs, and very dim red dwarfs are classified as machos. Among all of these, primary black holes are especially intriguing. They formed shortly after the Big Bang and settled on the outskirts of galaxies. There are such space objects in our Milky Way. They are real monsters devouring all matter and even light on their way. The substance inside of them is compressed with incredible density. If the Earth was compressed so tightly, it would be the size of a peanut. All of these supermassive objects bend light with their gravitational force. Look at an object through a glass. Can you see that the image is distorted? Almost the same effects would be observed in the space area rich in black holes. However, astronomers don't observe any distortions. So machos are no longer seen as the main dark matter sources. And to be honest, this explanation would be too trivial. But the universe likes to throw very tricky puzzles. After that, scientists turned to the quantum world. They were interested in weakly interacting particles, which are heavier than regular ones. There were none among those known to science. But that doesn't mean they don't exist at all. Weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs for short, are now considered to be a potential dark matter source. It's worth noting right away that WIMPs haven't yet been discovered. As of now, they exist only in theory. But if scientists' conclusions are correct, then WIMPs have several varieties named after some well-known particles. Photino, Gravitino, Neutralino, etc. The real hunt is on. Scientists were trying to catch WIMPs both in cosmic rays and in a purely terrestrial device, the Hadron Collider. Giant detectors are being built to search for WIMPs in cosmic rays. They are huge water tanks, hundreds of cubic meters deep, hidden at a depth of about one kilometer, preferably under rock. This is done to cut off other particles that can't break through a kilometer of rock. For WIMPs, this isn't as much of a hindrance. There are two ways in which such detectors look for WIMPs. The first way is to try to detect WIMPs directly. The second is to detect WIMP-generated neutrinos. Scientists have suggested that the sun captures WIMP particles when moving through space, but it doesn't release them back due to its huge mass. Because of this, WIMP concentration inside our star is constantly growing. These particles become very crowded especially in the center of the star. They begin to collide with each other and turn into, you guessed it, neutrinos. So what, you can say? Countless nuclear reactions accompanied by the formation of neutrinos occur inside the sun all the time. And such neutrinos were already discovered back in 1956. But neutrinos can be very different. The neutrinos formed as a result of WIMP collision have dozens of times more energy than the already well-known regular solar neutrinos. These energy-rich neutrinos are what scientists are trying to catch under one kilometer of rock. But so far, neither WIMP itself nor the WIMP-generated neutrinos have been found. Scientists are very hopeful about X-mass detector, which is being created in Japan. A water reservoir with a volume of almost 800 cubic meters is hidden under the rock at a depth of the same 1,000 meters. It contains a target in the form of a container filled with liquid xenon. If a wimp hits a xenon nucleus, it will cause a flash and the nucleus will release a photon. 
It will definitely be seen by at least one of the 642 special photoelectric sensors. XMAS is calculated to be 100 times more sensitive than existing WIMP particle detectors. In addition, if this hundreds of tons detector gets triggered, the particle will be registered directly and not indirectly, as when discovering an energetic neutrino. After all, you never know how it could be formed. There is a more interesting hypothesis that the invisible part of the universe can be produced not by one WIMP particle, but by a whole world of particles mirroring ours. When you think about it, if ordinary matter is made up of a lot of different ingredients, why can't dark matter be as complex? Think about it, dark protons, dark electrons, dark photons. Suppose you are sitting on a cozy sofa and watching our video with a friend. Suddenly, all the matter in his body becomes dark for some reason. What will you see? Nothing. The electromagnetic force that binds atoms and molecules, cells, and organs into a single whole will disappear from the body. So your friend will sort of evaporate in an instant. The dark matter making up his body will simply scatter in all directions. Then the second part of the horror will come, but you won't notice it either. Pieces of your body will keep coming back. The speed of their movement won't be enough to overcome the planet's gravity, and the particles will remain attached to the Earth. Without the electromagnetic force preventing the passage of dark matter through the planet, they would just fly back and forth and return to the starting point about every 90 minutes. Since we are constantly moving in a large spaceship called Earth around our galaxy's center, billions of particles collide with our body. But only hundreds of thousands of them a year manage to collide with the nuclei of our atoms. As a result, it turns out that everyone interacts with dark matter about 10 to 11 times per hour. Experiments aiming to find dark particles are also conducted at the Large Hadron Collider. Scientists try to get WIMPs when colliding ordinary particles accelerated to super speed. A lot of quantum garbage remains as a result of these experiments. As in any landfill, sometimes you can stumble upon a real treasure. One time, researchers managed to unearth the famous Higgs boson there, but so far, wimps haven't been found. However, scientists hope to conduct more successful experiments at the new generation Large Hadron Collider, spanning across a whopping 100 kilometers, being built under Lake Geneva. It will be four times longer and 10 times more powerful than the current one. But dark matter is not the only wild card in our structured universe. Remember how we said at the start of the video that the standard model of cosmology suggests that the universe is 25% dark matter and 70% dark energy? That is, there is almost three times more dark energy. So if dark matter is a wild card, then dark energy is like a wild deck of cards. Well, let's try to take a closer look at this deck. These two dark components of our world are not related in any way. Dark energy doesn't form clots that can serve as building materials for stars and planets. Unlike dark matter, it's evenly distributed throughout the universe. There are as much of it in galaxies and clusters of galaxies as outside of them. In addition, dark matter has mass and bends space with its gravity and dark energy experiences anti-gravity. It is sewn into every empty slot in our space web, that is, into space itself, and constantly expands, as if adding cubes of space it consists of, adding them one by one. Ultimately, this is what causes the universe to accelerate, if in fact there is an entity with such properties. But what does it mean that the universe accelerates? First of all, the universe expands. 
Edwin Hubble proved that distant galaxies are drifting even farther away at the speed which is directionally proportional to how far a particular galaxy is. Second, the concept of acceleration means that if you measured the speed of one of these galaxies and visited it in a billion years to make the second measurement, you would find that it has increased. Galaxies are becoming more and more distant at an ever-increasing speed. In the time following the Big Bang, dark energy spread at an insane speed and rapidly expanded the universe. Now, it's no longer as strong, but still, it's capable of doubling the scope of the universe in 10 billion years. At the same time, the density of dark energy accelerating it in all directions is extremely low. So far, vacuum is considered as the most probable dark energy source. Its energy density doesn't change as the universe expands, which is consistent with negative pressure. Another rival is a hypothetical super-weak field called the quintessence. Scientists hope to better clarify the nature of dark energy, first and foremost with the help of new astronomical observations. Meanwhile, researchers are creating many new hypotheses explaining it. One of them is just a gift to those who predict apocalypse. Its authors are astrophysicists from the Swinburne University of Technology in Australia and the University of Portsmouth in the UK. They believe that dark energy can rip our world apart. Over time, this dark force will begin to surpass all others in the universe. As a result, gravitationally bound structures will be ripped apart and electrostatic and intranuclear bonds will be destroyed. Microparticles will decay and the world will eventually come to a ruin or maybe some cosmic catastrophe will lead to critical fluctuations in dark energy. Then the universe will collapse into a singularity. The only good news here is that dark energy will not end the world as we know it in the foreseeable future. According to scientists, this can happen when the universe is 1,000 times older than it is now. This gives us enough time to thoroughly study dark matter, dark energy, and tame them to prevent any catastrophe. Do you agree? Write what you think in the comments below. Leave a like if you liked our journey into the dark world of the universe. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to learn about the most amazing space discoveries.